Hello and welcome to this special late night edition of Lauren from Lauren and the Books. It's a bit like Hollyoaks Later. I don't know if you've ever watched Hollyoaks Later, but yeah. It's me, late at night, no makeup on. Me, rebel, rebel t-shirt on. Um, and I'm about to, I'm sat here in front of my computer, um, waiting for the Women's Prize Long List um, 2020 um, to be released. Now that's going up at one minute past midnight. Um, and when that has gone up, I'm gonna give you my live reaction to that list. Um, I made a list earlier today um, of the books that I sort of think and hope will be on there. Um, and I'm about to just quickly read through those. I'm gonna mark them off. So if I get them right, um, I'm gonna mark them off on here to say that I've got them right. Previously, the list has been 16. Um, so I've made a list of 16. Um, and I've also grabbed all the books off of my shelf um, that are uh, uh, that are legible for the prize so that if they are um, on the long list I can sort of pick them up and have a little um, talk to you about them and I've also got Goodreads open here as well so I'll be able to um, to talk you through the synopsis if I don't know it so we can learn together um, yeah this is the first time I've done this <laughs> actually I mean Midnight isn't even that late, but it feels to me like I actually um, went to sleep for an hour and a bit um, because I couldn't, I just couldn't stay up. Um, so I've, I've literally woke up about 15 minutes ago and um, just gonna have a bit of water. And yeah, let's learn this uh, long list together. So let's first of all start by who I think is going to be on the long list. Now I did put this on my Instagram um, account earlier, so I'm, I'm not going to go into much detail here, but I'm literally just going to read out the books um, that I think will be on there. Um, and also just add a little side note is whether I've read them or whether I own them and they're unread. Um, so we've got about seven minutes before the um, the list comes up and I'm not going to keep talking to you the whole time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just going to read out who, who I think will be on the list this year. So I think Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Everisto will be on the list and I own that but I haven't read it. I think 10 minutes 38 seconds in This Strange World by Elif Shafak will be on the list. I think The Testaments by Margaret Atwood will be on the list and I've read that. I think The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde will be on the list. I haven't read that but I do own it. I also think A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes will be there. Queenie by Candice Carty Williams will be there and I've read that. You'll know how much I love that book. Um, I think The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargreaves will be there um, and I own that but I haven't read it yet. Um, the Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel. I will be so shocked if that is not there. Um, I think Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell will be there. I think Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid will also be on the long list. I'm currently listening to that on audio. Um, I've got about three hours hours left and I've been really really enjoying that. Um, the Confessions of Franny Langton by Sarah Collins, I think that's going to be there and I've read that. Uh, the Girl with the Loud in Voice by Abby Dare, um, I think that will be there and I own that, I haven't read it. Um, similarly, I own but haven't read The Heavens by Sandra Newman which I also think is going to be on there. Um, Weather by Jenny Offaly, uh, The Dutch House by Anne Patchett which I own and haven't read and Saltwater by Jessica Andrews. So those are the books that I think will be on the list. We've got about five minutes now before the list comes up um so yeah i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna come back when the list is live um and uh yeah we'll, we'll discover it together exciting i'm back and it's midnight um i i think i'm gonna i'm gonna look on twitter in a minute but i'm just gonna try the actual website um to see if anything's going on there i think it goes up at one minute past midnight um so let's see if it's on there yet the women's prize for fiction no, not yet. Right. <laughs> it's one minute past midnight and it's not on the website. I got it. Oh, I've just seen one I've just seen one that I got right. Let's have a look. Okay, here we go. So we're going in all alphabetical order. Um, by the author's surname. So the first one is Gin Patrol on the Purple Line by Deepa Anapara, which I've not heard of, although I think I saw that on Mercedes, um, Gin, uh, Gin Patrol on the, I think I saw that on Mercedes long list. So that says here, three friends venture into the most dangerous corners of a sprawling Indian city to find their missing classmate. Down market lanes crammed with too many people, dogs and rickshaws, past stalls that smell of cardamom and sizzling oil, below a smoggy sky that doesn't let through a single blade of sunlight, and all the way at the end of the purple metro line lies a jumble of tin roof towers where nine-year-old Jai lives with his family. From his doorway he can spot the glittering lights of the city's fancy high-rises, and, and though his mother works as a maid in one, to him they seem a thousand miles away. 
this sounds amazing. Jai draws outside sweet shops, watches too many reality police shows, and considers himself to be smarter than his friends Parry, though she always gets the best grades, and Fiaz, although Fiaz has an actual job. When a classmate goes missing, Jai decides to use his crime solving skills he has picked up from TV to find him. He asks Parry and Fiaz to be his assistants, and together they draw up a list of people to interview and places to visit. This sounds so good, but what begins as a game turns sinister as other children start disappearing from their neighbourhood. Jai, Parry, and Fiaz have to confront terror parents and indifferent police force and rumours of soul snatching gins. As the disappearances edge ever closer to home, the lives of Jai and his friends will never be the same again, drawing on real incidents and a state a spate of disappearances in metropolitan India. Love that. Sounds amazing. So that's the first one. Uh, the next one is, um, so di I didn't guess that one and I haven't guessed this next one either. Um, and that's Fleishman is in Trouble by Taffy Bradessa Ackner. Um, so let's have a look at that one. Uh, this says, recently separated Toby Fleishman is suddenly and somehow, and at age 41, short as ever, surrounded by women who want him, women who are self-actualised, don't sound like something I would like. Uh, women who are smart and interesting, women who don't mind his height, women who are eager to take him for a test drive with just the swipe of an app. Toby doesn't mind being used in this way. It's a welcome change for the 13 years he spent as a married man, the 13 years of emotional neglect and contempt he's just endured. Anthropology anthropologically speaking it's not it's like nothing he's ever experienced before particularly back in the 1990s when he first began dating and become used to swimming in the murky waters of rejection but toby's new life liver specialist by day kids every other weekend rabid somewhat anonymous sex at night is interrupted when his ex-wife suddenly disappears either on a vision quest or a nervous breakdown toby doesn't know she won't answer his texts or calls is toby's ex just angry like always is she punishing him yet again for not being the breadwinner he was she was as he desperately searches for her while juggling his jobs and parenting their two unravelling children, Toby is forced to reckon with the real reason his marriage falls apart and to ask if the story he has been telling himself all this time is true. Interesting. Interesting. Male male lead there. Um, Queenie by Candice Carty Williams is on the list. Um, I've got that here. It was one of my favourite books of last year and I actually added it to my favourite books of the past five years. Love it. You follow Queenie um, as she negotiates life, um, living in um, London, uh, dating, dealing with mental health, dealing with uh, the gentrification of the places she used to live when she was growing up, dealing with mental health issues. It's funny. It's real. It's not sugar-coated. There's experiences here um that with sexual assault and things and then the next page is an hilarious encounter with her friends it's just it's it's constantly giving i think it's really important i think everyone should read it and i love love loved it so so delighted that is on there so hurrah that's one i've got right get the green highlighter out and highlight that um, so feeling very pleased about that. The next one is Dominicana by Angie Cruz, which I believe a lot of people thought was going to be on there. Um, so let's have a look at what that one's about, because I don't know what that's about. So this says here, 15 year old Anna Cancio never dreamed of moving to America the way the girls she grew up with in the Dominican countryside did. But when Juan Ruiz proposes and promises to take her to New York City, she has to say yes. It doesn't matter that he's twice her age, that there's no love between them. Their marriage is an opportunity for her entire close knit family to eventually immigrate. So on New Year's Day in 1965, Anna leaves it behind everything she knows and becomes Anna Ruiz, a wife confined to a cold six floor walk up in Washington Heights. Lonely and miserable, Anna hatches a reckless plan to escape but at the bus terminal she is stopped by Caesar, Juan's free-spirited younger brother who convinces her to stay. As the Dominican Republic slides into political turmoil Juan returns to protect his family's assets leaving Caesar to take care of Anna. Suddenly Anna is free to take English lessons at a local church, lie on the beach at Coney Island, see a movie at Radio City Music Hall, go dancing with Caesar and imagine the possibility of a different kind of life in America. When Juan returns Anna must decide once again between her heart and her duty to her family. Sounds very very interesting. Uh, the next one is Actress by Anne Enright. Um, I don't think I've read anything by Anne Enright before. Um, oh no, hold on. Is A Spool of Blue Thread, is that Anne Enright? Because I've read that. Um, this says, uh, Catherine O'Dell is an Irish theatre legend. As her daughter Nora retraces her mother's celebrated career and bohemian life, she delves into long-kept secrets, both her mother's and her own. Catherine began her career on Ireland's bus and track truck circuit before making it to London's West End. 
Broadway and finally Hollywood. Sounds like I'm going to love this. Every moment of her life is a star turn with a young Nora standing in the wings. But the mother-daughter romance cannot survive Catherine's past or the world's damage. With age, alcohol and dim in stardom, her grip on reality grows fitful and fueled by a proud and long simmering rage, she continues to commit a bizarre crime. Her mother's protector, Nora, understands the destructive love that binds an actress to her audience, but also the strength that an actress takes from her art. Once the victim of haunting crime herself, Nora eventually becomes a writer, wife and mother, finding her way of her own heart hard won joy. Actress is fin finally a book about the freedom we find in our work in the love we make and keep. Interesting. Um, and then we've got um, Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadina Varisto, which I said would be on the list. Oh, goodness me. Lifting all of these books here. Um, this is one that I own but haven't actually read yet, but I did think would be on the list. This tells um, a series of um, 12 different people, um, mostly women, mostly black, uh, their stories of them um, living in Britain. Um, and it looks like it's told in a sort of, I guess, uh, do, do I mean the, the term um, like um, experimental? But there's not much, it doesn't look as though there's much um, grammar and stuff there. Um, I've been meaning to read this for ages. I bought this for myself just after Christmas. Um, and obviously now is the time that I'll definitely be reading that. So very excited to see that on there. Very excited to mark that off. Well done me for getting another one right. That's two so far. Uh, the next one is Nightingale Point by Luan Goldie. And that one is one I don't actually think I've seen mentioned at all, if I'm correct. Don't tell me that Goodreads is about to break. I don't think it is. Right, it says, one ordinary day, one ordinary extraordinary event, their lives changed forever. On an ordinary Saturday morning in 1996, the residents of Nightingale Point wake up to their normal lives and worries. Mary has a secret life that no one knows about, not even Malachi and Tristan, the brothers she vowed to look after. Malachi had to grow up too quickly. Between looking after Tristan and nursing a broken heart, he feels older than his 21 years. Tristan wishes Malachi would stop pining for Pamela. No wonder he's falling in with the wrong crowd without Malachi to keep him straight. Elvis is keep trying hard to remember the instructions his care worker give, gave him, but sometimes he gets confused and forgets things. Pamela wants to run back to Malachi, but her overprotective father has locked her in and there's no way out. It's a day like any other until something extraordinary happens. When the sun sets, Nightingale Point is irre irrevocably changed and somehow, through the darkness, the residents must find a way back to lightness and back to each other. Okay, didn't have that one down. The next one I did have down and I don't own it. It's A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. Um, so mark that on there. Um, that is a retelling, I believe, um, of... What is it a retelling of? It's a retelling of... <laughs> I don't want to belittle it by saying... It's a retelling of some Greek war. <laughs> um, uh, but actually like told from the perspective of women in a way that I'm promised is more so than... Um, uh, Cersei, no, not Cersei. Um, what was the one that was that got shortlisted last year? The other one. It's a retelling of the Trojan War from an all-female perspective. Um, and I read a few of these last year. I read, oh my god, what is it called? I read Cersei, and then the other one. I read it on audiobook. One moment, please. Let's have a look. I actually think I returned it because I didn't really get on with it, so it might not even. Be. Oh no, they should. It should anyway. The other one I read that wasn't like that at all. So, um, yeah, that's another one I have got correct. Um, then we've got How We Disappeared by Jing Jing Li, um, which I have not heard of. So let's get that up. Come on. So this says, a beautifully stunning, a beautiful, stunning, ambitious novel set in Singapore about a woman who survived the Japanese occupation and a man who thought he had lost everything. For fans of Min Jin Lee's Pachinko and Georgia Hunters, we were the lucky ones. Singapore, 1942, as Japanese troops sweep down Malaysia and the Singapore and into Singapore, the village is ransacked, leaving only two survivors and one tiny child. In a neighbouring village, 17-year-old Wang Di is bundled into the back of a troop carrier and shipped off to a Japanese military brothel where she is forced into sexual slavery. After six years of silence, what she saw and experienced there still haunts her present. In the year 2000, 12-year-old Kevin is determined to find out the truth, wherever it might lead, after his grandmother makes a surprising confession on her deathbed, one she never meant Kevin to hear, setting in motion a chain of events he could never have foreseen. Weaving together two timelines and two very big secrets, this stunning debut opens a window in, on a very little known period of history revealing the strength and bravery shown by numerous women in the face of terrible cruelty a profoundly moving novel is based partly on the author's great grandfather's experiences i just heard Minnie meow because she doesn't like it on my way so yeah that one as well the most fun we've ever had by claire lombardo another one i haven't heard of 
I do like it that you find out ones that you've never even heard of. The most fun we've ever had, we ever had by Claire Lombardo. Um, oh, this cover looks familiar actually. Um, a dazzling multi-generational novel in which the four adult daughters of a Chicago couple still madly in love after 40 years recklessly, recklessly ignite old rivalries until under excuse me, until a long buried secret threatens to shatter the lives they've built. When Marilyn, oh this is long so I'll just read this first bit. When Marilyn Connolly and David Sorensen fall in love in the 1970s, they're blithely ignorant of all that is to come. By 2016, their four radically different daughters are each in a state of unrest. Wendy, widowed young, soothes herself with booze and younger men. Violet, a litigator turned stay at home mum, battles anxiety and self-doubt when the darkest part of her past resurfaces. Lisa, a neurotic and newly tenured professor, finds her Self pregnant with a baby she's not sure she wants by a man she's not sure she loves and grace the dawdling youngest daughter begins living a lie that no one in her family even suspects above it all the daughters share their lingering fear that they will never find a love quite like their parents interesting um then then it's the mirror and the light by hillary mantel which i've just said i'd be really really surprised if it wasn't on there that's the third in the series um uh, that's one i don't think i'll get round to reading whether it's on the short list or not um because um it's the third in the series and the other two books are massive wolf hall and i can't remember what the other one's called um but really really big historical fiction books which i tried reading before and i just didn't get on with maybe another time in my life i will uh, uh, fine I, I will get on with them but um yeah the third one in the series i think i, I won't get round to that um girl by edna o'brien that wasn't on my list but it is on my tbr for this month because it is a um i'm reading it for the women's um uh, for the for the irish readathon um edna o'brien sorry is a um irish author um and this is um following a story of a girl who is um captured and abducted and married into boko haram um and this sort of um is the following the sort of horrors of her um of her stay with the them. and um yeah it sounds um, horrifying but super duper important so um, that is on my my to read list um even though i didn't put it on my um on my uh, on my predictions i bloody should have put it on my predictions i don't know um then hamnet by maggie o'farrell which um i also um thought would be on there um i've made a note of that actually i went to a um to a to an author talk earlier this uh, month no, uh, last month, sorry, um, about uh, for Sarah Perry and the guy who she he was she was in conversation with, absolutely said that um, that would be on that would be on there, um, and this says here it is uh, it's. I believe it's sort of like a retelling of Hamlet. It's not actually out yet. It's not until the end of the month. Out not until the end of the month. It said, drawing on Maggie O'Farrell's long-term fascination with the little-known story behind Shakespeare's most enigmatic play, Hamlet is a luminous portrait of marriage as it heart at its heart the loss of beloved child. Warwickshire in the 1580s, Agnes is a woman as feared as she is sought after for her unusual gifts. She settles with her husband in Henley Street, Stratford, and has three children: a daughter, Susanna, and then twins, Hamlet and Judith. The boy Hamlet dies in 1596, aged 11. Four or so. Years four years or so later the husband writes a play called Hamlet so yeah that's that I thought that would be on there um and then Weather by Jenny Offill which is another one oh we get into the ones that I thought would be on there um I actually thought her name was Offaly but it's Offill um so that's that's a short little one I believe um I think people were not sure whether or not it would make it um but it's about climate change and something that I'm very very keen to read um and then we've also got the dutch house by Anne patchett which i also thought would be on there and i also own um got it here i own it um and don't look at this lovely copy it's from um from Waterstones um, and actually I don't know much about it it says Danny Conroy grows up in the Dutch house a lavish folly in small town Pennsylvania taken on by his property developer father though his father is distant and his mother is absent Danny has his beloved sister Maeve Maeve with her wall of black hair her delicacy her brilliance life is comfortable and coherent played out under the watchful eyes of a house's farm, former owners in the frames of their oil paintings then one day their farmer brings home Andrea her arrival will exact a banishment a banishment whose reverberations will echo for the rest of their lives as decades pass Danny and his sister are drawn back Back time and again to the place they can never enter, knocking in vain on the locked door of their past. From behind the mystery of their own enforced exile is that of their mother's self-imposed one, an absence more powerful than any presence they have known. So that's another one that I've got on there and I've done that. And then the last one is Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson, um, which I've just watched a video of um, Mercedes talking about it and it does look really, really good. Um, 
So I haven't read that, but we'll be sure to read it. And I'll just read you the synopsis of that. Then we can all go to bed. Well, I've got to edit this and then we can go to bed. Um, moving forward and backward in time, Jacqueline Woodson's taut and powerful new novel uncovers the role that history and community have played in the experiences, decisions and relationships of these families and in the life of a new child. As the book opens in 2001, it is the evening of 16-year-old Melody's coming-of-age ceremony in her grandparents, Brooklyn Brownstone. Watched lovingly by her relatives and friends, making her entrance to the music of Prince, she wears a special custom-made dress but the event is not without poignancy 16 years earlier that very dress was measured and sewn for a different wearer melody's mother for her own ceremony a celebration that ultimately never took place unfurling the history of melody's parents and grandparents to show how they all arrived at that moment woodson considers not just their ambitions and successes but also the costs and the tolls they've paid for striving to overcome exploitations and escape the pull of history as he explores sexual desire and, and identity ambition gentrification education class and status and the life-altering facts of parenthood bred at the bone most striking he looks at the ways in which young people must so often make long-lasting decisions about their lives even before they've begun to figure out who they are and what they want to be hmm. so yeah so that is the women's prize for fiction long list um and i got one two three four five six seven seven right that's pretty good that is not quite half um a few that i'm surprised aren't on there i'm surprised the testaments aren't on there i'm surprised the base rock isn't on there um and yeah, I, I really thought um, Such a Fun Age was going to be on there as well. So those are three that I'm surprised are not on there. But really excited. To, it's always exciting when a list comes out and it's got books on there that you haven't read before as well. So um, I'm now going to, um, obviously, the next my, my next um, three books that I'll be reading are the books that I own of these. Um, so Girl, Woman, Other, um, um, Girl, Girl, and uh, The Dutch House. These are the ones that I'm going to be starting on. And then I'm going to get my hands on the others um, through the library, through um, Audible, um, order a few as well, um, particularly Hamnet, which I really want to read, but isn't out until the end of the month. Um, very, very exciting. So yeah, so that's exciting. Let me know what books you are planning to read off of the long list. Very, very excited to hear. Let me know if you had predicted um, any off of the long list. And I will speak to you all again soon very soon. See you later. Bye.